Hello and welcome to How to Conquer the SaaS Universe with Augment, presented by Augment. I'm your host, Ed Hannon, and my guests today are Derek Belair, CEO and co-founder of Augment, and Jake Carroll, VP of Sales and Customer Success with Augment. I'd like to thank Derek and Jake for joining me today uh, and just remind everyone that we're going to be talking, like I said, about how to conquer the SaaS universe with Augment. And let's just get started with the first question. Uh, this one's for Derek. Your website mentions that software as a service is taking over the world, but why is it becoming so popular? And that's a great question. Certainly over the past few years, we've seen a, a fundamental shift uh, happening in the way that small and mid-sized enterprises are, are consuming technology. And, and that, that shift has happened uh, definitely as an organic movement uh, and the MSPs have felt it. And it's really this whole move towards software as a service. So at this day and age, most organizations are looking for innovative, cost-effective, and, and new ways of being able to access technology that will enable them to move their business forward. Uh, we see a real shift from traditional infrastructure, hardware, and software, and a move towards organizations leveraging SaaS and clouds as a way to, of leveraging new technology uh, that may have been um, unavailable to them in the past due to cost and due to complexity. Organizations all over the world are seeing, especially in this day and age with COVID, are seeing this as a way of leveraging technology that will empower their employees to be able to use the technology they need to get the job done without uh, the bloat and the on-premise licensing and infrastructure required for traditional software. Great stuff. And what problem, or I guess I should say problems, does SaaS solve for the end user? When you think of, uh, of a traditional uh, infrastructure purchase or software purchased by an organization, there's usually very significant upfront costs that are required uh, to adopt that technology. Uh, it requires extensive on-premise uh, expertise. Uh, it requires uh, maintenance, configuration, upkeep, all things that tended to be barriers to adopting potentially new technologies. For all intents and purposes, SaaS has done away with that. You know, they've created a model that moves capital expense towards more of an operating expense, makes acquiring technology from a cost perspective much easier, makes implementing and deploying technology on premise much easier. And really what SaaS has done is removed all of the traditional barriers that are in place for implementing new technology. And so all of a sudden, the problems that it has solved is giving your employees the best possible products and technology that they need to get their job done regardless of where they're located geographically, whether it's in the four walls of the office or whether it's sitting on their couch at home using you know, their wife's laptop or husband's laptop. Excellent. Uh, we talk about the end users. I want to come back a half step on that. How did the, uh, today's MSPs get the most from SaaS solutions? Well, and that's a great question that we get asked, you know, all the time. So MSPs are truly on the front line of servicing their customers. As an MSP, you know, they're not really in business of, of providing hardware and software. What they want to do is they want to solve technology challenges that will help the business move forward and execute on their corporate goals and objectives. And technology has really, you know, been a means to an end. And now when you look at SaaS, the SaaS movement is happening organically within the organization. Right? In most cases, an employee or a department decides that they would like to leverage a tool to accomplish a certain task or, or achieve on a certain project. They go off and they do their own evaluation. They engage with the vendors directly. And then the relationship between the vendor and the organization is established. Where we feel the MSPs are uniquely positioned is that they are truly the only ones that can take a step back and they can understand what is the organization trying to solve. What is their current restrictions or limitations with regards to cost, with regards to in-house expertise or potential security issues? And they're able to make recommendations, not just for how technology should work together and be integrated uh, so that the organization can achieve their goals and objectives, but they can truly be a partner on that customer's journey towards you know, the adoption and the implementation of those tools. So we feel that SaaS specifically, the SaaS relationship happening between the customer and the vendor is maybe one of the biggest opportunities that the MSPs are facing today, which is they are in the prime seat to be able to say, we as an MSP will help you 
Choose the right products, implement it, secure it, deploy it, and train your organization. And we will do so in a holistic view, understanding where you are today, the infrastructure, the software and the hardware, and where you want to be. And that's really only the MSP can do that. The, the SaaS vendors themselves are really there to sell products, but that integration, that roadmap, all of that needs to be done by the MSP. So huge opportunity. Excellent. And then um, when we talk about, and one of the things that's really hot right now is this digital workforce and this, you know, the digital, everything's digital, digital management, digital transformation, digital workforce. How does SaaS management help today's digital workforce? That brings up a great point because a big part of SaaS and SaaS usage is, is what we call shadow IT. And shadow IT really is, is the, the, the true scope and the, and the true uh, usage of SaaS application in the workforce. Now, when you ask a, an in-house uh, CEO, a CFO, you ask anybody in an organization, how many tools do you think your organization is using in SaaS and cloud? Most of them will give you an answer of 40 or 50. Yeah, these are the ones that they typically see every day, the Salesforce, the Office 365, the G Suites, the things that they know and, and they've come to, to, to rely on on a daily basis. What most organizations don't realize is that 40% of IT spend happening in most small and mid-sized enterprise is happening in what we call shadow IT, which is really technology adoption in the cloud that goes below the radar of the internal IT departments. So this is, for example, you decide tomorrow that you're going to work from home and you want to leverage uh, Calendly because it's a great little tool that hooks up to your email and, and it makes it easy for people to schedule meetings. Or maybe you decide that you're not a big fan of Microsoft Teams, but you love Slack and you and a couple of coworkers decide you're going to work together. The use of those tools, not necessarily done maliciously by the employee, but the use of those tools can have significant impact on the organization. And when we talk about impact, we're talking about data privacy, data protection, security policy, and so on. So for us, the impact and the need for SaaS management is not only to manage what everybody looks at, Office 365, Salesforce, the day-to-day -day product, but it's for an organization, an MSP, to get a true sense for what is the entire picture. We always call it an iceberg. Everybody looks at what's above the waterline, the big tools everybody uses every day. What people often forget is the tools below the waterline, while they may not hit you know, the credit card, while they may seem free, they all carry certain level of risk, certain level of productivity. And we are big believers that as an MSP and as a customer, the more data, the more knowledge you have, the better decisions you'll make down the road. Excellent. Let's move to our next segment, augment your SaaS solutions. Uh, Derek, the first one's for you, and then we're going to bring Jake in for some of the other ones. But SaaS management for MSPs, tell me more about why that's important and why, why is now the right time to do that? On this video, you've got two people that have made their entire careers out of the channel. I've been at this for 20 years. Jake has been at this probably longer than I have. And the reality is the evolution that happened with system integrators and, and bars and, and resellers moving from hardware and software resale and moving towards services was a fundamental shift that happened in the industry. It was all about recognizing that reselling hardware and software while a means to an end was not what was gonna drive business value for an MSP and building reoccurring services was really the transition. And we all spent in the channel, the better part of the 2000 and the 2010s really working through that transition. Well, we feel that today, we are at the crossroads that are that is very, very similar to what we saw back in those days, which is the fact that hardware and software resale, while a necessary means to an end, is, is not necessarily how the small and mid-sized organizations of the future are really going to be consuming software. It's going to be SaaS and it's going to be cloud. And what we feel, and, and the real mantra for why Augment is in business, is that we are every day thinking about ways for MSPs to build more value, more service revenue, more engagement with their customers. And we feel that SaaS is one of those perfect solution and, and perfect technology trend for them to grab onto. Because number one, it is a trend that is already taking place. So the MSP doesn't have to convince anybody about SaaS and cloud. Most organizations understand it. But we feel that the MSPs are the only ones in this industry that can actually make all of the SaaS cloud work together and secure it. The vendors really are, are not there to help you integrate your tools together. They're there to make it easy for you to access the tool. In-house IT is, is you know, always looking at the next challenges, what they're trying to do to secure their organization. 
But the MSP is the only one that can have that healthy balance of understanding where the business is going and how the technology is going to get them there. And SaaS is this perfect opportunity for MSPs to build SaaS services, high profit, high revenue, high value. It's interesting, the, the, that sort of middle ground thing, because you could say you're stuck in the middle, but I like the way you see it as really an opportunity to leverage the best of the both sides, the vendor side and the end user side. So I think that's uh, a great point that you make there. And I want to swing over to Jake here. Uh, Jake, real quick, um, to that sort of picking up on what Derek was saying, what are your partners and their customers telling you about the problems that they're experiencing every day? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So the technology terms are uh, more visibility, control, management, security, automation, right? But that all starts with the story, right? So you're an MSP and you're managing, you know, small to medium-sized customers, a 50-employee company. Most of the data we see from, um, from Gartner and from Forrester and from everybody says an app per person, you know, in SaaS. That's 50, right? It's, you know, 50 applications, but that's 50 portals, 50 invoices, 50 logins, 50 apps that can be sharing corporate data, right? Varying degrees of licensing, some free, some paid by the month, by the year, the commitments, when are the renewal dates coming up? How do you, how do you get your arms around all that, right? So as an MSP, you're out there trying to help your end clients, you know, use technology for competitive advantage to win more business, to have better customer satisfaction ratings and all those kinds of things. And the thing is, Cost control is really, really important. Security is hugely important, right? So it starts out with, you know, they got to get their arms around what's going on, right? Um, if they want to make fact-based decisions, they need to have the information and then they need to draw the conclusions based on the information that they have. So it would be, you know, unfair to say they're running blind, but ultimately there's no one source of where can I go to understand everything, whether you're an end client trying to understand everything that's in your organization. What software do I have? Who uses it? How often do they use it? What am I paying for? Am I overutilized? Am I underutilized? Do I have duplicate technology around the organization? I can pull some things together. So those are the problems that we're hearing, right? The, the, the benefit of you know, a remote workforce. You can hire people all over the country to do a very specific job with the right talent and skills that you need. You give them agency to pick the tools they want to get their job done better, right? This movement toward enabling your employees to do their jobs better and pick the tool sets they want to use. Great stuff, right? Not easy to manage, right? So that's what we're hearing in terms of the problems that MSPs and end clients face through the ubiquitous um, and consistently um, more robust use of SaaS applications. It's so funny, um, you know, doing these to programs like this, how like, the technology seems so easy to use and everything, but there's a lot of work. <laughs> there's a lot of work in the undercarriage of the car that makes what we get to use easily be used easily. Like there's a lot of, like you, when you said 50 and 50 and 50, like there's a lot of mechanics that happen yeah. that we don't even think about that make this seem easy when it's clearly not. So Speaking of easy, um, how do augment solutions help, you know, solution providers and their customers solve the problems that we just talked about? Yeah. So now, good question. So the first thing in, in almost every way that an MSP runs their current business is they, they would never have taken out a managed services contract with somebody until they had full visibility of the environment. How many people, routers, firewalls, switches, and, you know, PCs, desktops, laptops, servers, what's the environment look like? What's the state of everything? Right. So um, before they could offer a service or provide some value or cost what it's going to you know, take to manage that customer and make them more efficient. So very similar to what's happening with SaaS, right? They have to get visibility first, right? So that's where Augment Discover comes in that says, let's go out and data collect what's happening, right? What are the software titles that are being used? Who is using them? How widely are they being used? You know, in, in essence, it's a data collection model, right? Let's give you visibility to what's out there. Second thing is, okay, now that the MSP has that information and can share it with their end client, they can have a more, a more formalized discussion about, well, look, this is what we're seeing in your organization. You know, which applications do you want out there? Which ones are high risk, low risk, high productivity, low productivity? What do you need? What's a nice to have, right? Have that discussion. Once MSPs are able to gather the information and have those discussions, now we come into optimize, right? Who's using it? How often are they logging in? Is there duplicative technology throughout the organization that you can begin to consolidate? 
Um, what's the cost per end user to use a particular product? Uh, are you taking it, you know, you have six people using something independently that you could have grouped that purchase together and gotten a volume discount. So out there with MSPs now being able to say, look, I can A, make you more efficient, but you know, end clients react to managed service providers value proposition by what can you save me, right? Oh, it's saving money is, you know, 10 times harder to make a dollar than it is to save a dollar. And again, this kind of visibility through Discover, you know, when we move into Optimize, we're able to show that, you know, using integrating with financial systems, pulling down what the cost structure is for different applications, understanding who's using it and just getting yourself to a steady state of these are the right applications. This is the cost that I can afford. And not only that, but now you get into planning. Is the MSP going to help this small business grow? How many employees are you going to hire next year? 10 to 15, right? Multiple locations. Like, okay, what's the profile of that employee? What software do they need? What's that going to cost me going forward? So now, you know, I'm an employee and I'm going to you know, hire 50 people. I don't have to go with a generic multiplier for software expenditure. I know exactly what it's going to cost me per person by role by the software products they need. And, and that's where, you know, you talk about the flood of applications that are coming into a building. Well, as you manage it going forward, it's like, all right, the right applications at the right price, optimized for my usage patterns. And then we come down to engage, which is, you know, the automation part. Eventually, it's going to be, how can you onboard? How can you offboard? How can you automate adding a user or decreasing a user or making sure that the deployment goes as, as easy as, as could be and efficient for your customer, not obtrusive, you know, getting an application to somebody in advance of their hire date or on their hire date or getting them offboarded like on their separation date. So it's secure. You're not paying more money than you ought to. That's where the augment platform is going to help manage service providers and their end clients get their arms around what, you know, maybe looks like a tangled mess of spaghetti and makes it more of a straight line linear equation as to how you can manage it better. It's a great point, uh, especially the part of the the, the end there about offboarding people. You know, when you're dealing with the, the reality where the rubber meets the road, you know, there's an IT admin somewhere out there who's got to do all this stuff and turn the knobs on and off and hit the levers and stuff. And, you know, to your point, if, if you're literally just like, it's a Friday, like, well, leave it up for the weekend, you know, tick, 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 or, you know, yeah. or it's a holiday weekend, we'll leave it up till Sunday, tick, 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 tick. So, you know, and to that end, uh, I'm going to bring Derek back in. It's not so much about offboarding, but with everybody sort of scattered right now and this workforce that's sort of all over the place, you know, how can the, you know, the, the solution provider, the MSP, you know, get the most from augment, you know, SaaS management solutions? That's a great question. We get asked that, uh, you know, quite a bit, especially with with what's happening, you know, recently with so many remote workers, uh, organizations rethinking the the traditional corporate office, you know, single network model, and and really pushing the boundaries of how are we going to deal with security when people are geographically dispersed, working on you know wherever uh, in the world. What's it going to mean? Uh, you know, Jake did a great job at talking about, you know, the products and, and what they do. And, and what I'll say is that the way that we've designed the Augment solution, we always start thinking with what is the service the MSP could and should offer and what is the technology that's going to allow that to happen. And so for us, the absolute simplest, easiest first step that any MSP and, and, and their customers should look at is let's understand what is the SaaS usage. You know, we know that Without fail, SaaS usage is always exponentially larger. The number of applications is exponentially larger than what most organizations think it is. And that's because the minute you send workers at home, then they look online for ways to get their job done better. Most of it is not malicious. Nobody sets off in the morning saying, I'm going to steal corporate data. What they want to do is they want to figure out how can I get my job done faster? And if I know that IT is slow and they're not going to provision me this product that I want to buy, then I'm going to look for a free tool or a 15 day trial. And I'm going to use it because there's really this sense that there's no real harm being done to the organization. So the first thing we tell any MSPs is the best thing you can do for yourself and for your customer is to help understand what is the true SaaS usage within your organization. From there, really the the services uh, tend to lay themselves out on their own. The first thing you do is you discover what's being used, and then you will highlight the issues that are high-risk applications that you definitely do not want the organization to use. For example, you are a OneDrive shop, and all of a sudden there are six salespeople using Dropbox. That is a flag. You need to deal with that right away, and you as an MSP need to provide your customers with a, a remediation, whether it's creating a policy, 
updating a policy, actually blocking applications on the network, that needs to happen right away. And so for us, you know, we always tell our MSPs, the, the path to SaaS management starts with discovery. And once you've got a good handle on discovery, we will provide you tools to add value at every step of the way. You know, that's really where, where all of the success with our existing customers has been is in, is in really creating that cost-effective way of being able to go out and do the discovery. And, and the reality is when it comes to SaaS, the easiest, absolute easiest thing that you can do as, a, as an employee is, is acquire or buy a piece of software. That's the easiest. Making it work, making sure it's secure, making sure it's backup, all of those things is where the complexity begins. So, you know, we, we always start off with our MSPs, start thinking about SaaS services, start with discovery, and then join the journey towards profitable SaaS services with Augment. Excellent. And then I'm going to uh, just close out the section here. Zigdark, this is for you. How do Augment Academy and Augment Assist make life easier for MSPs? Well, and, and that's a great question because that really comes back to, to sort of the, the mantra here at Augment where we always start off with what is the services that can and, and should be offered? And then how do we work our way back? You know, while we've spoken a lot on, on you know, during this, the, this conversation on the technology and what we do and, and the value, it's really important to understand that while we feel that SaaS services is a no-brainer for, for every MSP. Everybody should just sign up and get going. We do realize that the MSP is juggling a very big portfolio of services, which usually extends from networking services to security to backup and data protection. And we understand that going to market with SaaS services does require go-to-market model, does require some coaching. And what we've done is we've actually created two things. One is the Augment Academy, which is a learning center to help our MSPs understand what are SaaS services, how do you charge for them, how do you go to market. And Augment Assist is really there to be a, a private labeled or white glove services designed for us to help the MSPs build out those services and, and potentially you know, configure and build out the offering specifically that they can take to market. So while they are non-product specific, they tend to work very, very well at helping the MSPs take our solution and go to market very quickly and effectively with very simple programs that are proven successful within their end customers. Excellent. And let's move to our final segment, uh, MSPs manage successful partnerships with Augment. Uh, Derek, first one is for you. What can you tell us about Augment's freemium offer? Sure. So the Augment freemium uh, model is a seeding model designed specifically to help MSPs get our solution out to as many of their customers cost effectively. And so what we've done is we've really taken our traditional pricing model and we've really packaged it up and tightened it up so that we make our solution, we're talking about the Augment Discover, the Augment Optimize, uh, and the Augment Engage, we make it very, very cost effective, uh, by the way, of about $4 per customer per month to do and begin that SaaS management journey. Because we understand that when it comes to SaaS management, taking the first step, getting a product, getting the program, that's always the hardest part. Once they've got that behind their belt and they've got customers on the system, it's much easier to start going deeper on SaaS management. And so what we didn't want to do is make sure that pricing was an obstacle or a barrier to adoption, number one, and a barrier uh, to deployment at the end customer. So we've created a package for $4 per company per month. The MSP can deploy this product to as many of their customers as they want and start their journey uh, and their customer's value on the SaaS services and SaaS management side. Excellent. And then uh, this one is also for you, Derek. Um, what's the main reason that you know, MSPs, solution providers, uh, should partner with Augment? Yeah. Well, it's, it's the combination of, of, I would say, everything that we've discussed on this call. The fact that you know, we are an organization that is 100% focused on, on the MSP and, and how the MSPs can build profitable SaaS services business today. We've not only packaged the products that drive those services, but we've also built programs to be able to you know, enable and facilitate the go-to-market. And lastly, is we've made it super simple for for MSPs to acquire the product in a very cost-effective manner. Meaning we've tried to identify every potential barriers that an MSP is facing when wanting to deliver SaaS services. And we work 
every day, myself, Jake, the entire management team at reducing or eliminating those barriers. So I would say the combination of the products, the combination of the programs, and the combination of the go to the market freemium model, those three things is really the winning formula that will allow MSPs to be able to deliver SaaS services today, not wait in the future or potentially risk uh, an incumbent moving in, but start delivering SaaS services today, very cost effective. Excellent. Always looking for a winning formula. Jake, this one's for you. Uh, how can today's audience find out more about joining forces with Augment? Oh, thanks, Edward. First of all, you can go to augment.com. You can download an ebook. There is an enormous amount of content that, that Derek had mentioned that is in our academy that you can even access just from the website without even being a partner. So you can begin to learn about, you know, what's my journey as a uh, as an MSP that does SaaS management going to look like, right? You can see the services, you can see the kinds of things that we offer. So there's eBooks. You can sign up for a demo. You can sign up for a free trial. Um, or um, if you'd like, if if you're watching this um, this webinar, email us at sales at augment.com, augment with two T's, and mention that you saw this webinar. We'd be happy to take you through um, um, an understanding of our company, talk to you a little bit about your needs ultimately provide you with a trial of the product to determine technical viability in your business and then begin your journey as a, as a SaaS management MSP. Excellent. Well, um, unfortunately, as much fun as we've had today, that's the, actually all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank Derek and Jake for being here. I'd like to thank all thank of you, you for watching thank and uh, let everyone know that um, once again, I'm Ed Hannon and you've been watching How to Conquer the SaaS Universe with Augment, powered by Augment.